King Unique. So is this the second? Is this the first time for Australia since the Goods Festival? Yeah, uh, that was about eighteen months ago, wasn't it? So, yeah, yeah. It's the yeah. first trip back since then. I, I seem to do every year to year and a half uh, since about two thousand and five. You know. Yeah. So, um, what have you been up to since um, since the Clips Festival? What's 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 the King Unique's um, path thing? Well, King Unique, in terms of sort of like a, a man who makes music and plays it to people, has been remarkably quiet. Actually, I think the Clips was a few months into a decision I made to stop making music, um, which is what I've done my whole life. Uh, make music, not stop making. So, yeah, having uh, made it since uh, about the mid 90s, um, I realised I was sort of completely running on, on sort of reflexes and, and just on running on empty to an extent. Yeah. Just sort of making, making, and it slows you down eventually, just making stuff the way you always make it. You get your routines and they just cramp you up. So, eventually, I thought I would stop. Um, so, I'm taking an actual proper break. So, I took a year of not making music. Um, which gave me a chance to, to listen to music and consume it like everybody else does and just like sort of be somebody who enjoys music rather than wrestles with it all the time. Yeah. So that was really cool. I, I, I didn't, uh, I didn't uh, open any promos. I didn't sit down at a keyboard. I just um, listened to like, podcasts and radio mixes like anybody else does. Yeah. And just let this stuff flow in and just, uh, yeah, gave it a year. Came back about, about three months ago to, to writing again. Yeah. Um, with loads of ideas, having heard tons of stuff that really actually interested me, maybe sort of think, yes, I actually want to make music, not I have to make music. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so yeah, I came back, did this track, and uh, with no expectations, and it, it, it sort of raced up Beatport charts and got uh, track of the day on Beatport and all this sort of, you know, lots of kind of industry excitement to my yeah. intense gratification. So, um, so yeah, so right now I'm just kind of firing up again, and so I've got releases coming. Uh, all over the place, um, Bedrock and Sudbeat and Microcastle and remixes for um, Henry Side and all these uh, all these dudes in, in my sort of sphere. Yeah. Uh, I've just kind of come back and found loads of interest, made loads of music, signed to people. They're all excited too. So, so. What, what sort of what sort of influence would you say you have musically from to, on your tracks? Or from, um, from... Well, I mean. You were talking to James earlier, it yeah. echoes the thing he said about uh, not listening to dance music at home. Yeah. Exactly the same. This, this as a living yeah. and a kind of lifestyle it means you, you hear enough. You don't need to then additionally. So, um, so my personal taste is, is well away from that. I mean, I like things like sort of 70s. Um, there was a sort of a movement in Germany in the 70s called like Cosmetian music, yeah. and it was. Uh, it's the same sort of thing that led to all that sort of early Jean-Michel Jarre, which everybody knows, like, you know, da, 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 da. Yeah. That, that sort of sound in the 70s um, was a kind of big, spacey, hippie thing. Yeah. It was mainly in Germany that this stuff came. Yeah. Uh, that kind of thing floats my boat. How do you plan your set set generally? Do you? A lot, well, it's, it's a mixture, really. I mean, I think you, you need to have some planning. I mean, uh, I planned this set quite a bit because I knew I was playing between uh, Max Cooper and James. And, they're both known for a sort of degree of technical proficiency yeah. in their productions and their sort of delivery of their music. And so I was thinking, well, they're going to be, the, the crowd at Rainbow are going to have four hours with me between the two of this very sort of uh, head engaging, uh, intelligent sort of stuff going on. Yeah. Uh, as well as you know, the sort of straight dynamics of the dance floor. Yeah. And so I thought, well, um, while I enjoy doing all that too, I thought well, there's no point in giving every six hours of that stuff. So I just yeah. did some proper ass music. I just yeah. thought if I'd had two hours of Max doing this huge epic thing, and yeah. James is going to come in and blow your head as well, maybe some straightforward actual house music, bassline, you just banging, yeah, just mindless stuff where you can turn your head off again. Yeah, you know like, that. I thought would be what would be uh, required. So I sort of planned it to that extent. Yeah, yeah, I thought we'll do an hour of that, and then we'll do an hour of what I'm known for, not usually. Yeah, uh, and link it up with some some sort of random house things. Yeah, um, and yeah, it's, it's it, it seems to go down okay. Yeah, it seems good. Yeah, well, I can't the degree to which which stuff gets planned. I mean, um, I try and find the occasional sort of random track, like an old thing, just because if you're just playing yeah. from the current sound, everybody's reflecting certain. Tones, certain vibes, certain melodies, certain grooves, certain tempos, and so no matter how broadly you look, things are going to have a certain era and sound to them if you're just playing current music. So it's important yeah. to grab something from say five or ten years back. Yeah, and throw that in there just to. Well, that was like um, that eclipse to you dropped um, Bonnie Tyler. Yes, that was just amazing. <laughs> well, that was a, that was a funny story because basically I um, I sort of thought to myself, you know. Um, 
playing an eclipse. So yeah. I've got to say, yeah. you know, what, what's, the, what's the ultimate record to play an eclipse? And it's a total eclipse of the heart, obviously, just yeah. instantly. Yeah. Um, and I thought, okay, well, that's a weird thing to play at like a bush duff, though, so I'm not going to get away with that. So how am I going to use it? Yeah. And I thought, well, if I open with you know, once upon a time, I'm falling in love, and I'm only falling apart, da, 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 total eclipse of the, total eclipse of the, total eclipse of the. Yeah. And then there's a track by Caribou, which has an a cappella version, and it just goes, sun, 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 sun. So we had this total eclipse of the, total eclipse of the, sun, sun, sun. And the two echoed off, and that was the start of the set. Yeah. And that was kind of like a, a clever little trickery thing, and everybody was like, oh, yeah, very clever. You know, it's, yeah nod to the man for being clever yeah um, and then I got to the end of this really lovely set and everybody was really really happy and all wiggling away and uh, Casey Taylor was playing next yeah. and I'd finished my time and I was like yeah, Casey you're on mate and he said no 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 do a big one yeah, they all love it they love it do yeah. just play something big yeah and so I thought um, I, could, I was about to yeah, just pull out a, a thingy and I thought no yeah. can I 